Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Tell me, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. God bless you, Missionary Johnson. God bless you, Sister Stimson. Praise the Lord. Sister Riley, God bless you, Missionary Hamilton. God bless you, Sister Speller. Good morning, Sister Bedford. God bless you, Sister Jan. Good morning, Lady Winston. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Gray. God bless you, Bishop and Mother Joseph. Praise the Lord. Elder Smith, God bless you, Mother Wilkins. Praise God for you. God bless you, Mother Street. God bless you, Brother Stokes, Sister Stokes and the Stokes family. God bless you, Andrea. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Scott. Praise the Lord. Marilyn, God bless you, Sister Baisden. Praise the Lord, Sister Rodriguez. God bless you. Good morning, Miriam. God bless you, Angela. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you, Mother Holman. God bless you, Sister Haynes. God bless you, Pastor Hargrove. Thank God for you, sir. God bless you, Mother Walker. God bless you, Sister Stokes. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Burnett. God bless you, Sister Hopkins. Praise the Lord, Pastor and Lady Crooms. God bless you both. God bless you, Thomasina. God bless you, Margaret. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Ronza. God bless you, Sister Stimson. Praise the Lord. Deacon Stokes. God bless you, my friend. God bless you, Sister Frederick. Praise the Lord. Sister Scott. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Robinson Jacobs. God bless you, Sister Andrini. Praise the Lord. Sylvia. God bless you. Sister Polk, good morning, Tanya. God bless you, Marilyn. Good morning to each of you. God bless you, Mother Davis. God bless you, Mother Gill, Deacon Grant. Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and good morning, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know, and we are thrilled for those who are joining Joining us by Facebook, Instagram, and conference call. And this service will be added eventually to our YouTube channel. But we thank God for all of you this morning for God's goodness and mercy upon us. Thank God for his protection in the midst of this um, very large snow and ice storm that left quite a bit of ice and snow and stuff on our streets and we weren't able to go to the church physically for service but thank god we were able to carry on the work of god through in the virtual arena and those who joined us all day in prayer and uh morning worship and the evening gathering we're grateful to God for you. And we're thanking God for what the Lord is doing through prayer. I received word that my dear friend, Elder Tony Lemon, he and I have been friends for at least 40 years. Thank God the Lord has touched his body and healed him. He's out of the hospital. I thank God for another member of our church who's being discharged on today. So God is healing. God is delivering. I'm thanking God for people whose lives are being encouraged. Hallelujah. Because if there ever was a time when we were in vital vital need of encouragement and uplifting and support. Now is that time. And so we're just thanking God for everything the Lord is doing. And as always, 
if you have a prayer request, please place it into the chat so we can add those names to the prayer book, to the prayer list, and carry them before the Lord in prayer. If your request is of a private nature, please feel free to inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church so we can once again add those names to the prayer list and to the prayer book in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to continue what has been a very um, engaging study of this fifth chapter of the book of First Timothy. And we've used um, as our theme earlier, custom fit, um, because it spoke to very specific needs and situations and circumstances. And, and that's one of the, I guess, the um, traits of the Pauline epistles is that Paul is writing specifically to things that were taking place in the church. And ironically, and gratefully, these are things that still have to be dealt with in the church. They have not gone away. They have not gone away. They have not disappeared. They have not vanished. And the church must constantly address these issues. It's strange that even though time changes and technology changes and um, the 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 um, acuteness of life change, that the nature of people <laughs> to a great degree has not changed. Some of the same problems that Paul had to confront in Ephesus, in um, Corinth, in Thessalonica, he's we're confronting now some of the things. And that's why the Bible is a timeless book. It speaks to, hallelujah, not just the past, but the present, and it speaks to the future. And that's why as we search the scripture and walk in the scripture, we are able to better understand what we should do. And that's and that's the admonition. Lord, what should I do? How should I handle this, that, or the other? And so with that being said, we want to continue to deal with this. So I want to read from 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scriptures say, if thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. And I want to talk for a few minutes from the subject, the elders that rule well. The elders that rule well. Um, ministry, especially pastoral ministry, um, and, and I've done a number of things in my life and I'll, my career um, as, a, as a minister of the gospel. Um, I started out, as most ministers should start, serving under a pastor. And that prepares you um, to a great degree. Um, the one area it prepares you for is to serve. Because if you're going to minister, you need to serve. And I get very concerned about young ministers who immediately want to jump out in the field and jump out and do work and travel and operate at all of these grand levels. Because in so many cases, they're simply not ready. They're simply not ready. Um, but you train, you develop. You train in the word, you train in prayer, you train in the, the, the lifestyle of, of the minister, the, the godliness, the humility. And then should the Lord sanction and bless you, you might be assigned to serve a church as the pastor, as the leader of a congregation. And, and, and that is an, a, a daunting task at best. Leading a congregation is one of the most challenging things that you can do in life, that you can do in the church, simply because there are so many dynamics at work in leading and ministering to a congregation. Um, I wish it was just preaching, and I wish it was just teaching, but in so many cases, there are so many other elements. Um, the pastor has to be um, a counselor. The pastor has to be to some degree, an administrator. The pastor has to be a visionary and a planner. The pastor has to be uh, the settler of disputes. The pastor has to be um, an arbitrator. 
The pastor has to be sometimes a, a, a reasoner or a judge in dealing with certain situations. It is a multi-dimensional task. And, and, and someone equated the, the work of the pastor um, to be similar to that of an airline pilot, that of an air traffic controller, or even the president of the United States. And, and the reason why, the reason why, um, it is because in, in every case, these individuals, the airline pilot, the president, the neurosurgeon, another analogy, all of them, even though they have support staffs, even though they have support teams, they are usually the only one like them in the group. All right. I, I'm blessed. Refuge Temple is blessed with a cadre of competent, capable, anointed ministers who and elders who work and labor and assist and carry out so many functions that without them, we would not get a lot of things done. However, there's only one senior pastor and that's me. And so there's there, there are some tasks that when they fall, they fall just to the pastor. Um, you can have help. You can have assistance. You can have people that aid, but there's only going to be one you in that work that has to get the work done. And 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 this is not. I'm not here to to complain because to, I'm going to say this to a great degree. Pastoring was one of my dreams. Hallelujah. When I was a young minister, I had a couple of dreams, and I I, I said this a few years ago that God allowed me to live my dreams because I dreamed of being a husband. I dreamed of being a father. And I dreamed of being the pastor of a church and God has allowed me to live my dreams. The other things that have happened to me have been gravy, but these were the things I dreamed about. These were the things I envisioned for my life and the will of God had had it so that I have been able to live my dreams. And so I'm grateful for that. But sometimes your dreams have realities that are challenging. Your dreams have realities that are challenging. And, and, and so it's always good to look in the scripture to see how how the minister should conduct himself. And that was one of the issues that Paul was dealing with in this letter to Timothy. He was trying to establish, reestablish, trying to bolster the work of the pastor because Timothy was not the only pastor. He was the bishop over Ephesus. There were other congregations. There were congregations throughout the city and 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 Timothy was the overseer of these congregations and of these pastors. And some of them needed structure. They needed strength. They needed restoration to, to really engage in proper pastoral oversight. And, and they needed the church to know how the church should handle and embrace the pastor. And, and, and there is a way that a church embraces a pastor. Hallelujah. And, and, and you don't treat the pastor any kind of way. You don't treat his wife any kind of way because she labors with the pastor. There is a manner, there is a conduct, there is a mindset that has to go into the church. And this is not to say that the pastor nor his wife are monarchs. They're not dictators. They're not people that, that, that are there to manipulate other people, but they should be handled as gifts that come from God. And if you have a good pastor, if you have a good first lady, if you have people laboring with you in leadership that genuinely care about what they do and care about you and honor God, that's a gift that you should respect and that you should honor. Hallelujah. And so I thank God for, because even in morning prayer, we, we, we have so many pastor's wives and so many, praise our God, pastors to join this prayer that I'm just here to, to, to share the word. Hallelujah. I didn't pull this out of the sky. We've been following verse by verse. And here we are talking about the elders that rule well, the elders, the leaders that rule well. The Bible says they should be counted worthy of double honor. And if you have somebody, if you have a leader, a pastor, a shepherd, a bishop that rules well, hallelujah, that 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 shares, that is a person of integrity, that's a person that can be trusted, that gives you the word, that gives you the gospel, that tells you the truth, that loves you and cares for you, guess what? Guess what? That's something you should honor. Thank you, Elder Bailey. They are the angel of the church. They are the messenger sent by God to the church. And so how you handle that gift is critical. And, 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 and I'll say this, and, and I'm, I, I'm not being duplicitous. I'm being very honest. There is abuse on both sides. There are people that abuse their pastor and their first lady. 
And there are first ladies and pastors that abuse the people. And God wants us to come back into order, which is each one receiving the other as a gift. The pastor should receive his congregation as a gift from God because God did not have to entrust you with the souls and the lives and the and the well-being of those individuals. By the same token, the church has to receive the pastor and his wife as a gift because guess what? You could be in the hands of a scoundrel. How many people are in the hands of pastors who are womanizers, who are who are perverse, who are thieves, who are robbers, who don't love the people, care for the people, don't feed the people? And so if you've got a pastor that's feeding you and protecting you and trying to guide you spiritually and trying to support and love you and his wife is working in that vein, guess what? You ought to value that gift. You ought to value that gift and everyone needs to value the other. And so this speaks to what the church should do for the pastor. And so he says the elder that ruleth well should be counted worthy of double honor. There should be no struggle. And I know, you know, when you start talking about money, everybody gets tense and everybody gets nervous. But I, I want you to understand that if you've got somebody that's laboring, you have a responsibility to care for the laborer. Because once again, the pastor does more than just preach. He's a counselor. You might pay $300 for just to spend one hour with a therapist. And you'll knock on the pastor's door or you'll, or you'll call his wife and you'll sit and talk with them sometimes for hours. And some people, I'm not talking about everybody, but some people don't even say thank you. They just take up your time. They utilize your wisdom. They, they, they pick your brain and they don't even respond with a thank you. And if you have somebody caring for you, if you have somebody looking after you, you need to be thanking God for that. And the Bible, not Pastor Davis, the Bible says, thou shall not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. In other words, if the if the oxen is working on the farm all day, pulling that plow, pulling that cart, doing what the what, what, what he's supposed to do, you feed the ox. You don't work an ox and not feed him. You don't work an ox and not provide for him. You don't work an ox and not do for him. You feed the ox. And if the man of God is feeding you, if the people of God are feeding you, you're supposed to feed them. If they're providing for you spiritually, you, and it shouldn't be a struggle, and it shouldn't be an argument, and it shouldn't be the rolling of eyes. Oh, here comes his anniversary, or here comes his birthday celebration, or here just comes my tithes. It ought to be something that you're willing to do because you're being fed and cared for by the man and the woman of God. So there's a way that you treat them. There's a way that you handle them. There's a way that you manage how you deal with them. And, 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 and yes, I'm charging, hallelujah, ministers, ministers and their wives, people who labor in ministry, be people of integrity. Be somebody worthy of what you're going to receive. All right. The laborer is worthy. But if he's not laboring, he's not worthy. If he's not working, he's not worthy. If he's not trying to give and to share and to preach the gospel and to minister and to win souls, he's not worthy. If he's lazy, he's not worthy. But if he's doing what the Bible says he's supposed to do, then he is worthy of whatever is given to him. And it shouldn't bother you. You know, you don't worry about what your doctor makes. You give your doctor what you're supposed to do. You pay that bill, you pay that insurance, and you give it to your doctor. You pay your attorney, you pay your accountant, you pay your mechanic, you pay your plumber. Why do we struggle with caring for those who labor for us spiritually? Why do we struggle with that when they're laboring? Because once again, when you go and you need your car fixed and they change that tire or they change the oil or they put in new spark plugs or they give you an engine overhaul, whatever that bill looks like, you might not like it. You might roll your eyes, but you pay it because you want your car. Why do we struggle with the things of the spirit? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why, even if you didn't ask, because we don't value the things of the spirit. We don't value spiritual integrity. We don't value righteousness and, and competence in ministry. We don't value that. Hallelujah. We'd rather chase the, 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 the con man. We'd rather chase the false prophet. We'd rather follow behind somebody who we know nothing about, but somebody is laboring to carry the gospel and we ignore their needs. That's not right. It's not biblical and it's not sound. And some of us are not even blessed, not because we don't love God, 
Not because we don't love the church. We're not blessed because we don't properly honor the leadership that has been placed above us or with us in the body of Christ. And until we learn how to honor that, we're going to always have issues. We're going to always have problems. We're going to always have challenges until we learn how to handle that. Yes, the elder, and my time is gone. Yes, the elder needs to rule well. But when he rules well, he needs to be respected and honored for the level of the labor that he provides to the kingdom of God. I'm not done. we got to deal with this this week. I'm praying that God would open our eyes. And if there's anything we need to do differently, that we do differently. I examine the word constantly. Hallelujah. To see if I'm doing what the Bible says I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to tell everybody. I'm going to tell everybody. Pastor Davis is a diligent pastor. Pastor Davis is a loving pastor. Pastor Davis is a studious pastor, but Pastor Davis is not a perfect pastor. All right. There's nothing perfect about it. So when I tell you what the word says, it is not me throwing off as if I'm doing this. I'm still trying to get better at this. And I've been doing this for 26 years and I'm still trying to get better at this role in this office because it is so important and it is so sacred to the soundness of the body of Christ. We're coming back to this tomorrow. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you today for sound mind, sound body. Thank you today for waking me up this morning. Thank you for life and health and strength. And thank you for every blessing. God, you have provided for me. Thank you, God, for giving me the capacity to prepare myself this morning. And Lord, to join this great cadre of brothers and sisters from all over the world. God, I thank you for everyone today. One by one and name by name. I thank you for them, God. I thank you for their consistency. I thank you for their diligence. I thank you for their faithfulness, God. And I'm asking you now, hey, in the name of Jesus that you would bless each one in a special and unique way. I'm asking you, God, if you would minister to the needs of the people who are on this prayer line today, conference call, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, however they access it, God, I want you to bless them today. Oh, my shataye, in a powerful, mighty way. God, do for them, Lord, what only you can do. Provide for them only what you can provide. Open the door, my God. God, that seems to have been shut in their face. God, give virtue, give power, give deliverance, give help today to that person that needs you the most. God, strengthen every believer today. My God, and grant the petitions that they have before you. Some praying for their children, some praying for their spouses, some praying, my God, for their loved ones, their friends, for their pastors, for their churches. But God, whatever the petition is, I'm asking you to grant it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my God, that son, that daughter that's in trouble this morning. Oh God, that friend that needs a miracle. Oh God, that backslider that needs to be reclaimed. Oh God, that family that needs to be reunited. Lord, in the name of Jesus, stretch out your mighty hand. Oh Shandia your arm is not too short that it cannot save. Your ear is open, my God, to our cry, and we trust you to be the God that is able, the God that is able, the God that is able, the God that is able. Oh God, do it today, God, by your power, by your virtue, by your authority. God, stretch out your mighty hand and send deliverance now in the name of Jesus. My God, as we pray for every name that's on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every person in the chat, every person that's offered a request today on their behalf, on the behalf of somebody else. God, I'm praying that you would stretch out your hand and that you would send mighty deliverance in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for Melody White. We're praying for Ralph, for Bert, for Raquel. We're praying for the Scott family. We're praying for Sharonda Black and her family. We're praying for Tawana, for Joseph, for Jalen, for Joseph Jr. We're praying for Rain. We're lifting up Kenneth today. We're praying for Mother Wilson's grandchildren. God, everywhere. God, we're praying today for Stacy Watson and Trayvon that you would touch and deliver 
Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying, oh God, protection upon our seniors. My God, we're praying right now for Lynn Tedeschi. We're praying for singles. We're praying for the victims of the tsunami. We're praying for the victims of fire. We're praying for those that might be without electricity this morning. We're praying for the homeless. We're praying for Nancy and Barbara and Tommy and Tamara. We're praying for Andrea, God, that you would open up new doors. Oh, God, you've already prepared the way. So, God, open up the door and guide her into that next place. We're praying for Ulyssa Cook today. We're praying for Michael Barnes. We're praying, my God, hallelujah, for Renee, that you would cover and protect. We're praying for Ronald and Chad, that you would lead and guide and direct them. We're praying for Tyler. Oh, God, we're praying for backsliders everywhere. We're praying for expectant mothers and their children. We're praying for the Matthews children and grandchildren. We're praying for Elaine Nicholson's daughter. We're praying for T the Taylor family. We're praying, my God, for Tammy and Jesse Garnett. God, that you would bless as only you can. We're praying for Bella Garnett, God. We're praying for Taj. We're praying for the Moore family, the Williams family, the King family, the Robertson family. We're praying for Schaefer Memorial Baptist Church. We're praying for the Muhammad family. We're praying for Greater Refuge Temple of New York City and Refuge Temple of Burlington, God. We're praying for every church and congregation that's represented today, God. We're praying, my God, for Deacon and Sister Graves, Deacon and Sister Davis. We're praying for Daryl Spigner. We're praying, my God, for Mother Wilkins today. We're praying for the Smith family. We're praying for Deacon Wilkins, God. We're praying for the totality of everyone that's on this call today, that, God, you would meet every need. We're praying for the unspoken requests, things we can't share openly, but we're trusting you in faith that as we go into the secret closet, oh, God, you're going to reward openly. You're going to bless openly. You're going to deal with things as only you can, and we're believing you for that today. God, we're praying for the sick everywhere. We're praying for Mother Martin. We're praying for Bishop Joseph today. We're praying for Bishop Wilder. We're praying for Sherrod McKenzie, for Mother Taylor, who's about to have eye surgery. God, cover and protect her. We're praying for Joyce Mays. We're praying for Mother June Dixon. We're praying for Sylvia Matthews, who's undergoing a procedure today. God, we're praying, oh God, for Sheila. We're praying for Melvin Peters, Chesley Smith. We're praying for the Pew family. We're praying for Dr. Hayward's continued recovery. We're praying for Mother Jill, my God, and Mother Pride for their recovery. God, Lord, strengthen in the name of Jesus. We're praying today, God. Oh, hallelujah. We're praying for Brother Wiggins, and we're praying for Brother and Mother Sherrod, and we're praying for Deacon and Mother Garland today. God, we're lifting up, oh God the sick everywhere. We're praying for Bishop Alfonso Brooks today. We're praying for Mother Shirley Clark. We're praying for Mother Evangeline Jenkins today. We're praying, my God, for Lady Andrea Maxwell. My God, remember Pastor Jackson today and Pastor Carr. Remember Elder Tyson today and Elder Smith, God, with your healing virtue. God, remember Remember Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff, God, touch and strengthen. Remember my God, Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess, Lord God, touch them now. Remember Mother Home and Mother Tanaj, Missionary Simmons today. God, with your healing touch, Lord, move upon them now in the name of Jesus. We're praying, my God, for Marlette, for Maurice. We're praying for Chris. We're praying for Tony, God, because we know that you're a healer. We're praying for everybody that's suffering and recovering, oh God, from this Omicron. God, that you would touch them in a special way. Everybody battling COVID, whatever the form is, God, heal and touch them now. Oh God, people with long time effects, Lord, Move them and heal them now in the name of Jesus. Let your healing virtue flow everywhere, God. Let it flow, my God, to every hospital, every cancer ward, COVID ward, dialysis unit. God, every, oh God, I see you, God. Lord, be there now with them. God, be with everybody undergoing a medical procedure. Oh God, in person, outpatient, inpatient, outpatient. But God, cover and protect them in the name of Jesus. Remember every nursing home, every rehab center, even go into hospital hospice, God, because we know that you're a healer. You are the bomb in Gilead. You are the great physician. And we're praying for your help today. God, we lift up grieving families everywhere. God, we pray for the Long family. We pray, my God, hallelujah, for Yvonne Parrott. Oh, God, Susie Driver and their family in the loss of the mother and the grandmother. We're praying for the Gibson family, the Crawford family. We're praying for Juanita Dorsey Hamilton. We're praying for Sister Sharon Taylor and her family, God. We're praying for the Mitchell 
Mitchell family. We're praying for Pastor James Jackson. We're praying for the Moon family, God. We're praying, oh God, for Patricia Davis. God, we're praying for grieving people everywhere. We're praying, oh God, for Sister Wilkins, oh God, and Pastor, oh God, and Mother Sanders and their entire family. God, that you would touch and strengthen them. Oh God, everybody that's grieving. Remember the Graves Jones families, God. Remember, my God, every grieving family everywhere, that you would strengthen them, that you would edify, that you would help them, God, as they grieve. Lord God, keep them, cover them, protect them, God. Remember the Middletons today. Remember the Robin Beltran. Remember the Vaughn family, the Gay family, the Walker family, the Taylors, my God. Remember Bailey Austin and family. Remember the Washington family, God. Everybody that's grieving everywhere. God, we pray, my God, for the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds. We pray, God, hallelujah, oh God, for the, the Carters. We pray, God, for the Giles family. We pray for the Dockeries, God. We pray for Ebony, hallelujah, and the White family, God. We pray for every grieving family, wherever they are, that you would come and comfort and strengthen them, oh God, in their loss. God, we're praying, oh God, that you would give grace and strength, Lord. We're praying, oh God, for those, even if they lost loved ones years ago, oh God, but they're still grieving. God, help them and strengthen them. Remember the Davises. Remember the Harbises. Remember the Austins today in the name of Jesus. Remember, my gosh, I know no more. See, every grieving person. Remember the Allen Williams family. My God, and strengthen Trell and Ryan. Remember the Clarks, God, and give grace to Tommy and Michelle. My God, remember, oh, hallelujah, the Mays, the Dunlaps. Remember the Washington Fields family. Remember, my God, the Bankses. Remember the Purdy's, the Sneeze, the Winninghams. God, give them grace now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, help because we know that you're able. Oh, God, remember, oh, God, the Boojums, the Mannix, the Sapatas, the Felix family. God, remember them in a special way. The Gleans, the Arthurs, the Phillips family. God, we know you can touch and strengthen. Oh, God, give them strength day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour, and God, keep them. God, I pray for the body of Christ today. I pray for every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. I pray for every bishop and elder. I pray for every first lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon. God, I pray. Oh, I pray, oh God, for the young people in the church. I pray, my God, that you would strengthen and deliver. I pray, my God, for every musician, singer, and psalmist, everybody in the body of Christ. God, that you would help the body, that you would strengthen the body. Lord, so many things happen to tear the church apart, but we're trusting you, God, for grace, and we're trusting you for strength for every congregation, every pastor, every leader, every first family, God. We're trusting you for grace upon them. Oh, God, everyone that labors in the body of Christ, God, that you would encourage our hearts, that you would anoint us afresh, that you would give us grace and power to do what you have called us to do. God, guide us and keep us and help us to find our way to do things the right way. God, that you might be glorified. God, we pray today, oh God, for every first responder and essential worker, EMTs, firemen, policemen. We pray for students and teachers in every school. God, from kindergarten through university. God, we pray for your protection and your coverage. We pray, my God, for everyone that works to help another person in a hospital, in a clinic, in a rehab center. Oh God, in an office, God, cover in a store, cover and protect them now. Oh God, as we walk in wisdom and safety, oh God, in wisdom and faith, God, Lord, keep us and guide us and keep us safe, God. Remember those that are fighting this virus, God, and give them grace and strength, oh God, and relief and help us, Lord, oh God, to keep safe, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, remember the four corners of the globe. Remember everyone all over the world, God, every nation of the world, everywhere your people are found. My God, give grace and strength today, oh God, and bring healing, God, and heal this land, heal this land, not only from sickness, but from injustice and racism and violence and sin and perversion. My God, heal the land. Oh, heal the land, God, and give us grace, Lord, that we might stand, that we might live, that we might serve. Help us today. Oh, God, strengthen and keep us now. And as you bless us, we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, let's give God praise. Everybody, come on, give the Lord praise. 
bless his name, hallelujah, for his goodness and his mercy, bless his name for his grace, bless his name for his power, bless his name, hallelujah, because he answers, he answers prayer, bless his name, hallelujah, 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 oh God, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, thank you Lord, hallelujah, oh God, hallelujah, Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is, hallelujah, my declaration for today. Very simple. Lord, help me serve and lead. Lord, help me serve and lead. All of us are not pastors. All of us are not first ladies. All of us are not. But all of us lead in the body of Christ in some respect. Some of us hold titles, some of us don't hold titles, but we all lead in some respect. And if you're going to lead, you have to be able to serve. Hallelujah. If you're going to lead and you want to do it righteously, you want to do it in a godly way. You want to do it so that God can be glorified, God can be pleased, and God can be, hallelujah, proud of what we offer him. So, Lord, help me to serve. And Lord, help me to lead. If I have the assignment to lead, if I only lead by example, God, help me to lead by example so that others can see my example and know what is the right way and the right thing to do. So Lord, help me to serve. Hallelujah. No matter what your title is, you're a servant. No matter what your position is, you're a servant. And when you stop being a servant, you stop being used by God. So, Lord, help me to serve and then, Lord, help me to lead so that I can be the example of what you expect and what you desire in the earth right now. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. I'm trusting that this prayer and that this biblical meditation has blessed you and that your Monday is off to a good start. Some of us have the holiday, so please enjoy your holiday. Hallelujah. And some of us that have to get out, if you have to get out in this snow and ice, please be as safe as you can. All right. Be as safe as you can. Take your time. Hallelujah. As you travel over the highways. But we thank you for being with us this morning. And you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. And we thank those who are even with us by conference call this morning. The Lord bless you in a wonderful, wonderful way. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Please watch it. Please view it. Please listen to it. And if it's a blessing to you, please share. If this service today has blessed you, please share with somebody else so that others can hear the word and be encouraged by the word and by the time that we spend in prayer together because God is indeed blessing. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't seen the services from yesterday, Sunday school, Minister Perry did an outstanding job with that lesson, the morning prayer, the morning worship, and the gathering. If you have time, take a look at it. And once again, if it blesses you, please share. I want to thank um, you can listen rather to our radio broadcast that airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Hallelujah. I want to thank every person everywhere who seeds, sows, and gives to this ministry. Thank you for helping us do the things that we have to do for the kingdom of God. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift. To Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is Refuge Temple. N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, Refuge Temple NC.com. And you can share on the donate page. If you have the GiveLify app, you can also give there. Hallelujah. Just type in Refuge Temple Burlington and look for the picture of the church to know you're in the right place and make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, you can simply give at dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App, and you can offer a gift there. But thank you for your giving, but thank you most of all for joining and meeting me here every morning. Lady Davis and I are just so thrilled. I know you don't see her on camera, but every morning when I'm praying, she's praying. Hallelujah. Interceding on behalf of the needs of the people. But we thank God for all of you, and we appreciate you. So please keep praying one for another. Keep praying praying for me. Keep praying for Lady Davis. Keep praying for our children. Keep praying. Today is my son's birthday, and I want to give a shout out to Reginald Joel Davis II. Today is his birthday, and I celebrate my son. I thank God for him.
him on his birthday. Keep praying for our children. Keep praying for my dad. Keep praying for my siblings, my nieces, my nephews, our in-laws, everybody, everybody that's a part of our family. Pray for them in Jesus' name. Pray for Refuge Temple, that God will continue to bless us and pray for every person and every church that's represented in this fellowship that God would continue to bless. Look, God bless you today. Have a fantastic, phenomenal day. The grace of God be with you. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.